In this video, we illustrate our technique for total shoulder arthroplasty utilizing an anatomic shoulder prosthesis. This technique and system allow the surgeon to replicate each patient's anatomy by adjusting the inclination angle, version, and head offset. Hi, today we're going to talk about shoulder osteoarthritis and demonstrate a total shoulder replacement. Uh, my name is Peter Millett. We're here at the Vail Valley Medical Center. Our patient is a 74-year-old left-hand dominant gentleman with long-standing shoulder pain. He's failed non-operative treatment, including injections and physical therapy, and his pain has become progressively debilitating to the point where he has difficulty sleeping at night. He also has restricted passive motion and active motion in his shoulder. His x-rays, as you can see here, this is an AP view of the left shoulder demonstrating some of the classic findings of osteoarthritis. He has goat spear deformity with an inferior osteophyte here on the humeral head, flattening of the humeral head. He also has subchondral sclerosis, and he has some early cyst formation in the uh, juxtaarticular space, and particularly on the humerus. It's always important to get uh, 3D imaging as well, and we get either an MRI or CT scan to look at the shape of the glenoid and to, to evaluate the degree of glenoid retroversion that's present. Here's his MRI demonstrating mild uh, retroversion, but not severe. He does not have a biconcave glenoid. If they have a biconcave glenoid, you usually have to do more work and it's more difficult exposure. Uh, but this is fairly straightforward. Some, some retroversion here. Uh, you see his biceps tendon with a lot of fluid around it. There's a loose body uh, in the back here. You see again uh, joint space narrowing and flattening of the humeral head with some osteophytes anteriorly and posteriorly. And his subscapularis looks to be intact. So with this case we're going to demonstrate a, an anatomical total shoulder replacement and go through the steps to help you uh, do a better total shoulder replacement. Thank you. The patient is positioned in beach chair position with the assistance of a hydraulic arm holder. We utilize a standard deltopectoral approach. The incision begins just distal to the clavicle, passes over the lateral third of the coracoid process, and continues over the proximal arm. Full thickness flaps are created with sharp dissection. Next, the cephalic vein is carefully dissected and retracted medially so as to minimize traction on the vein with retraction. The clavipectoral fascia is identified and incised just lateral to the biceps tendon. At this point, the anterior circumflex humeral vessels are identified and cauterized at the medial border of the biceps tendon. To improve exposure, the superior attachment of the pectoralis tendon is released. A self-retaining retractor is placed deep to the deltoid and pectoralis major muscles. The biceps tendon sheath is next incised using curved Mayo scissors. The release is continued proximally and the rotator interval opened to facilitate exposure of the glenohumeral joint. The biceps is usually diseased and a common source of pain for many patients with glenohumeral arthritis. The biceps is therefore tagged and tenotomized for later tenodesis at the conclusion of the procedure. This release also assists with improved visualization and exposure. A curved osteotome is used to osteotomize the lesser tuberosity with approximately a 5 mm thick bone block. A biomechanical study performed by Ponce and Millet has shown that lesser tuberosity osteotomy repair proved to be more secure and stronger than both transosseous and soft tissue repair techniques. We have found that a thicker bone block corresponds to a stronger repair. 